Right guys, so in the last video, um, we dealt with the geometry part of the um, of the workbench simulation. And now um, we, met, we made this connection with the mesh and we're gonna open the, the meshing tool of ANSYS. Um, here, let me see. Yep, this is okay. So we wait for the meshing window to pop up. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this watertight geometry. Uh, uh, no, it's already selected. So I'm just going to import the geometry. And it's going to bring in our, um, our fluid domain that we created in the geometry setup. Mm -hmm. Yes, so this is what we have. You can see we have different colors for uh, all the different surfaces that we create. Uh, we created named selections for. We have the symmetric boundary condition. We have the inlet the outlet and in the middle right there we're, we're gonna have our walls and as for start um we're gonna add a local sizing I'm gonna change it to, yes this is our first face sizing um we leave it at face size and we're just gonna change this to 0, 0 0.01 that's one millimeter. So, um, you know, the target mesh size for the walls is gonna be one millimeter. And I'm choosing a very small size because, well, even though this dimension um, here at, you know, the center body cord is uh, big, but over there we have, oops, we have, um, a smaller cord at the wing tip. So we are aiming for um, a minimum discretization uh, along the cord, along the cord wise direction of at least a hundred cells. That's what's recommended for external aerodynamics problems um, is to have that um, a minimum div division count of 100 cells in the cordwise direction. So, since this um, this center cord here, or or else the root cord is about half a meter, um, and our tip cord is it's like a little bit less than 100 millimeters. I'm going with one millimeter uh, discretization here. And we're going to just select what the surface is, which is the wall. Add local sizing. Now for creating the surface mesh. Um, by the way, uh, this is like the workflow of fluid meshing. So um, this is like, I found that this is like the, the easiest way uh, to get a, a nice mesh for this kind of problem and uh, the way it works like we we add some uh, local sizings we create a surface mesh and from the surface mesh a volume mesh is going to be created last and uh, so it's important to get like some some nice settings in the the previous steps uh, so for our minimum size in the surface mesh we're going to go with uh, two two tenths of a millimeter. Um, it's a very small size, but I use that because we have, remember, we have our, um, our rounded trailing edges. If, if you choose like a very big uh, size, let's say it's, you, you leave it like one millimeter. Uh, when you create your surface mesh, you're gonna have like very skewed uh, cells here around the trailing edge because one millimeter is not enough to discretize that radius 
that cr that we created in the trailing edge. So we use like a very small um, value for that. Our maximum size, I'm, I'm gonna leave it at half a meter. Um, that's gonna be the size of the cells um, around the boundaries of our fluid domain. And um, here I just leave it as curvature because we don't we don't really have like proximity features in this model. So just curvature will do just fine. And I'm gonna create the surface mesh. And, but well, I'm gonna hit create surface mesh, but I'm gonna pause this recording. It might take a little um, like 10 minutes to generate, not, not so, but uh, like five minutes. So I'm gonna pause the recording and come back uh, once it's generated. Okay, so we are back and uh, now the surface mesh has been generated and first thing you can notice is that it's composed of triangles and this is the way uh, fluid meshing works. Uh, it first generates a triangular mesh around the surface and it uses that as a starting point to fill the domain um, with three-dimensional uh, three-dimensional uh, cells and you can kind of see what it looks like in the inside it's a very fine discretization uh, which is important for this kind of problem and well let's see how it goes um, to the next steps uh, so now the, the next step is to describe the geometry and here we're going to select that the geometry consists of only fluid regions with no voids and we don't change anything here, just hit fast. Okay, um, updating boundaries. <clears throat> this is the main reason why it's important to create uh, the named selections with the correct names uh, in the geometry setup phase because that allows ENSYS to automatically detect the kind of, you know, the boundary names and the kind of boundary that we're going to get. Uh, you just double check, we're going to have like a velocity and the inlet, a pressure outlet, symmetry, symmetric um, boundary condition uh, in the in the symmetric plane here, and a wall on the surfaces. And just hit update, update regions. This is correct. It's a fluid and now the important the most important part is to to select some good settings for our volume mesh uh, what i like to do is to use uh, the last ratio offset method uh, which allows me to pick the height of the first cell um, on the on the wall and for external aerodynamics problems where we are interested in calculating uh, drag and lift and moment and uh, and the like, it's very important to have this control of the first cell height. And uh, for this, I'm gonna use a very, very small height to the order of minus five. And this is basically just, I think it's 0 0.05 millimeter, 0 0.5, 0 0.05 millimeter. And the transition, I'm gonna use 30 layers and the highest transition ratio that I can use. Um, that way I have like uh, the thickest boundary, uh, the thickest boundary layer discretization that I can have. I could not. I cannot put like 1.2 here because uh, the maximum is one from zero to one. Uh, let me just double check my values. Yeah, these are correct. And instead of using just polyhedra, I'm going to use a polyhex core. Uh, this is a good thing about this fluid meshing. Um, it's a it's a very smart tool, and it's able to generate a mix of poly and hex cells. Uh, in the fluid domain with no big issue. And 
Um, both poly and hex cells are very good at accelerating convergence. Um, when you're using like tetrahedral elements, uh, you have two problems. Uh, one is that your mesh is just too big. You know, it, you can get like uh, maybe three times, uh, from two to three times the amount of cells that you would normally get by just using polyhexor. And number two, uh, you accelerate, accelerate uh, the convergence when you use poly and hex cells because the number of neighboring cells is way bigger. Um, well, not way bigger, but um, slightly bigger, uh, which means that the solution in one cell is, is being transmitted uh, to a, a higher amount of neighboring cells, um, thus accelerating the convergence. Um, so we're going to use that for our purpose. And I'm just going to change here the maximum cell length to match to match whatever I had in the surface part, uh, which was 0.5 meter. And once again, I'm going to create the volume mesh, but I'm going to pause uh, the, the video uh, while the simulation is running. And I'll get back once it's done. Okay, so now we're back here um, with the uh, meshing. And you can see that uh, now the surface, instead of having triangles, it has like um, polygons. And uh, this tells us that it worked. Um, we have 15 million cells, roughly. Uh, created in 29 minutes. By the way, this is a, um, even though it looks like a, a long time, this is way quicker than uh, the normal uh, workbench meshing. And the report says that the mesh has a minimum orthogonal quality of 0.2, which is acceptable for this. Uh, let me try to, yes. So you can see here, the inflation layer uh, around the wing surface. You can see that it's like pretty thin, close to the wall, uh, respecting the settings that we established before. And if we look, let me try to zoom in, zoom into the, this is tricky. I know it's just so hard to zoom. you look closely to the trailing edge, you can see that now we have uh, a nice transition um, from the bottom to the top of the wing. And that is because we have that rounded feature at the trailing edge. If we didn't, if we just had like a very sharp trailing edge, what would happen is that we would have like highly skewed cells uh, towards the trailing edge, which is not really good for for the CFD results. Yes, and um, yeah, I guess this concludes our uh, our meshing video. Uh, if we look at the the amount of cells, uh, skewed cells with a skewness of greater than 0.90 uh, is zero. So that's a really good, uh, I would say it's a really good result for such a, uh, such a big mesh. And the maximum skewness is 0 0.8 for, for this one. Um, something that is really useful for, for, you know, for inspecting the mesh is to use this clipping plane. Um, you can use that, let me flip it. So you can use this to inspect uh, the wing surface if you judge it's necessary. And you can also um, 
use this draw cell layer. It's very useful to see uh, what the cell distribution and sizing looks like uh, across the domain. So you can see that many of the cells are going to have uh, are going to be composed of hex um, of hex cells. And if you drag this closer to, let me bring it closer to um, the wing. Yep. So you can see that it actually, it, it allows for some refinement as the cells get closer to the to the wing body yeah so so this is what i wanted to show uh we have polyhedral cells, uh, but we also have the hex cells, and they get smaller and smaller until they get close enough to the wall. And this is what the inflation layer looks like. It's basically an extrusion of the polygons that we had uh, at the wing surface that we observed pre previously, uh, it ex it's extruded 30 times because we have 30 layers. And then we have a transition from the inflation layer to the hex cells. And that is done uh, by, by means of uh, these poly cells. Uh, ANSYS is very smart. Uh, nowadays with this aut automatic uh, mesh creation and um, I hope this is a, a useful tutorial for whoever wants to you know apply a similar method for their external dynamics problems and um, well thank you for your attention and in the next video we're going to talk about uh, the actual case setup uh, choosing you know um, selecting a viscous model, uh, uh, editing boundary conditions, and uh, calculation activity, activities, sorry, and so on.